The sales forecasting module was created by E2B Technologies for manufacturing and distribution companies who want to better manage inventory levels by anticipating customer demand and use that demand to plan production and purchasing activities. Functions within the module are the ability to maintain multiple forecast versions, the ability to enter forecasts by item, customer, sales rep, and territory, the ability to maintain forecasts by year, the ability to define different forecast periods and smoothing periods for MRP planning, the ability to create a master production schedule using the forecast and enhanced MRP, the ability to import and export forecast data using Excel, and the ability to view prior year's forecast and actual sales history. The sales forecasting module is written using the MASS 500 toolset and is integrated with MASS 500 security, MRP, inventory management, inventory replenishment, and sales history. The forecasting module is also integrated with the E2B enhanced MRP product. Forecast product groups are established to control how groups of items will be processed in forecasting. In this first example, forecast quantities for the items added to the forecast product group will be entered individually by item in the forecast entry screen. So first we want to create a product group ID uh, that's used to define the items that will be processed in a similar manner. The pro and then we give it a product description. Warehouse is required because all items entered in the forecast must be inventory items that are assigned to a warehouse in MASS 500. The forecast type is used to define the detail required for forecast entry. Okay, I'm going to bring up a, a brand new screen to show you the drop down. So what this gives me are the options that I can use to enter the items into a forecast. If I wanted to keep it simple, I would just do it by individual item number. If I wanted to get more detailed, I can go all the way up to territory, sales rep, customer, and item. So each item within this product group would need to be entered in in that detail then. Okay, selection cycle is a future basically, we're not using that just yet. The forecast period type is used to define the period used for forecast entry of items included in the forecast product group. This is also known as forecast interval. The options here are daily, monthly, quarterly, weekly, and yearly. So basically that's the period that I want to use for entering in my forecast numbers. Next to it we have the smooth period type. This is used to define the period for forecast demand generation of items used in MRP. So in this case, we're going to enter the forecast quantities in monthly, but we want them divided down to weekly buckets for planning in MRP. Okay, the options there again are daily, monthly, quarterly, weekly, and yearly. Now, in that division, uh, it may not always divide out equally. So now we want to define our smoothing method here. Now, front heavy allocates excess demand in the first period. Rear heavy allocates excess demand in the last period. True smoothing front spreads the excess demand across the front of the forecast. And true smoothing rear spreads excess demand across the back of the forecast. Okay. Now, next to that, you'll see roll and we can put a number in here and demand periods forward in MRP. This is used to define if unsatisfied forecast quantities should be rolled forward to future periods in MRP. So we would enter the number of periods to roll forward in our, our smooth periods here. This entry determines how many times a smooth period forecast quantity will be rolled forward until it's satisfied by sales orders and or shipments during MRP processing. Now entering the items into the product group can be accomplished by entering one at a time. You'll see I have three individual items here. Or I can click on the select here and import them that way. So you'll see a lot of categories here by item type. Of, typically I'm going to forecast finished goods items so I could say item type is equal to finished goods uh, and then I've got different item classes and sales product groups and so forth. Now keep in mind that an item can only be used in one forecast product group. 
Uh, multiple forecast product groups are only required if the items being forecasted require different warehouses, different forecast types, different product uh, uh, forecast period types or smoothing types or allocations by percentages which will be the next example that we're going to talk about. If all items are forecasted using the same settings then only one forecast product group is required. In this second example of our forecast product groups forecast quantities for the items added to the forecast product group will be allocated by percentage. So you'll see in this case I have a product group ID called CATS which represents catamaran sailboats. On the grid below I've identified five individual item numbers that fall within that particular group. I've also checked allocate quantities by percentage. This makes forecast entry easier because a total of the forecast product group is entered and then the system will create separate demand records for each item in the product group based on the allocation percentage entered on this screen. The allocation percentages here can be entered manually by item if they are not equal for each item in the forecast product group. The percentages must equal 100 percent. If the allocation percentages will be equal for all items in the product group, then you can select the allocate button to have the system enter the percentages. Again the percentages can be changed if necessary in the grid but they must equal 100 percent after the adjustments. The forecast entry screen is where all the forecast information resides whether it's entered manually or imported using the functions we'll look at in a little bit. The first thing we do is enter the version ID and the year either enter or look up the product group and these are the forecast product groups that we created before Put my shafts and then I can either enter or look up an item and you'll see that the uh, warehouse defaulted in from that product group and it is grayed out now if in that product group you had selected to also control it by territory salesperson and customer then I would need to enter that information as well. So all of that is controlled by that product group definition that we did before. Now if I click on the forecast you'll see it displays all the quantities that I have by period. Now in our setup option uh, we said January was the first or beginning month so that's the beginning month in the forecast line here. We also said we wanted to see five years uh, in prior forecast and sales history. So in the grid below, that's what's showing. So I can see sales 2008 that has the quantity for each period out there that I've actually invoiced. So this gets updated automatically from Mass 500 invoicing. I can also see the CRM information that we entered in before when we actually imported that in from an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Now, even if the data is imported from Excel, I can still go in and maintain the forecast quantities um, up in the forecast line here. Okay. The next step is to create demand. Now, this can either be done here or off the menu. There's also a demand generation program there. And basically what this does is go out and split it now from the months into whatever the smoothing period was. Uh, the catamaran sailboats will be looking at that next. We actually went from months to weeks and I believe we did the same thing here months to weeks. So it's actually then splitting it out where that's going to show up in a, a maintenance grid where then I can see well here's all the items and here's the forecast quantities that go along with them. Forecast entry for product groups that I define to be allocated are handled just a little bit differently. Again, I put in my version ID, my year. I'm going to look up the product groups. And again, the product group defines what happens in it. So you'll see when I put in the product group, it grayed out the item because it doesn't want individual items. It wants to know for that whole grouping of catamaran sailboats how many in total do I think I'm going to sell for each period out there? Okay, so this is my forecast quantities uh, up in the forecast and below you'll see again I have sales for all items that fall within that product group and then the same thing for CRM all of those items there was actually five sailboats that were part of that uh, product group called CATS. 
Okay, so in this case, I just enter the forecast quantity for all sailboats that I think I'm going to sell. And then when I click on create demand out here, that's going to split that up in between all the different items uh, that make up that product group. Entry for those product groups where you are going to break it down by territory, salesperson, or customer uh, also is handled a little bit differently. So when I put in the version and the year and the product group and then default the item, now it's asking for, in this case, a customer. Now I might set up records for four different customers, but then I also sell it to other customers that I just want to group in one category. Okay, so I'd have four records, one for each of the individual specified customers, and then for all other customers, I check the all others box, it becomes unspecified, and then I can enter in a forecast that would be for all customers other than the four that I had previously identified. Okay. If we had not run the demand generation program off the forecast entry screen, then we would come to the demand generation screen off the task menu. We would enter in our forecast version and year. So you can see you can maintain as many years as you want to out here. Tells me that forecasts exist and generated demand already exists for this. And I'll go ahead and process this. Tells me it's going to replace whatever is currently out there. Okay, very fast process. That's already done. We'll also do it for the, the boats, and it's 2008 as well, so we'll generate that. Okay, so that's really all there is to that. The next thing we would do would be to come into the Demand Forecast Maintenance screen, and that's going to show the results of that demand generation, where it broke it down from the entry period to the smoothing period based on the product group definition. Okay, again we're going to put in our version ID. And our year. Okay, so in our, our COA version out there, these were the items that we had listed. And you'll see that now it has period 1, 2, 3, where we only had 12 periods before because we actually entered it in in months. You'll see now there are 53 periods. So using that smoothing that we set up, um, it divided it out. Now I can see on the screen the total quantity that's out there for the whole year for each one of the items in the total column and then each individual period has the quantity that it's divided it out to be. Now if I'd like to see um, how that's broken out I can do a right mouse click and then go out to the forecast breakdown and that then will display the quantities that are out there in the monthly buckets as I entered them in in the forecast. Okay. Now this is the information that's going to flow to MRP for planning. Now let's go look at the boats that we uh, defined out here and entered our forecast for. Okay, so now you'll see that it, it is split up into the individual boats out here where I entered in one quantity for the whole group of sailboats under that uh, product group called cats out there. Now it's split it up and it's divided it up um, by week out here uh, what I think I'm going to sell. Okay. Now again if I wanted to see how I entered that in right mouse click go out here and I can see uh, how what the quantity is out here uh, for each uh, period that I entered in. Okay. And again that's the information that's going to drive material requirements planning.